Wasteland. Man, it's been a while since I made one of these videos. It's been so busy. Oh my goodness, it's been so busy these last few months. This this winter has been busier than the last five years combined. It's uh, it's pretty unprecedented. So so we've got a lot to cover in today's episode. So let's just jump straight into it. This is an update for everything before we jump headfirst into 2019. So, let's start with what have I been getting up to? Well, the first thing is competitions! There have been multiple competitions over the last couple of months, starting in November. So, let's go with one of my favourites, the Auto Kill 500 race that took place. So, this was to celebrate Auto Kill hitting 500 members on the Facebook group, and what my good friends from Wales did. They decided to hand out gifts to the first three places based on how many people would enter the competition. So it wasn't just a matter of only the best of the best can enter this. It was a matter of, no, the more the merrier. You don't even need to make a custom build for this competition. Just enter in your favourite work and see what happens. It was all community driven. It was all based on likes and from from you guys. So the first three results, well, I came in second, and I'm not sad about that at all, because the guy I lost to, Fabiano Souza, he is an, an amazing builder of wasteland cars. He's shown me what the next level of creating an artwork at this medium is, and that's interiors. I've got to start. I've got to learn. I've got to master the technique that is not just opening up the cars, but actually doing something with the interior of the car. You know, putting little boxes and little backpacks and things in there, having little people in there and having a dog, because apparently people love dogs. So I came second to Fabio and Asusa, but you know what? His work is stunning, absolutely stunning, so I don't feel bad at all. And in third place, we had Kultar Breer, who I think came out of nowhere. I mean, he challenged me for second place up to the last minute of the last day. It was incredible. And his build was so simple and straight to the point. It's a Volkswagen Beetle on tank tracks. I mean, what's not to love? And it's got a great little heavy machine gun on there. So the Auto Kill 500 competition was great fun, and I can't wait to see what the next one holds. Because as you know, once you hit a thousand or two thousand members, you've got to do another one. But that wasn't the only competition this month. Oh no, I entered my build into a second one over on the MakerShare Makerzine website. So this was a competition in November as well. So I was trying to build a car to go into two competitions at the same time, because that's always a good idea. And this one would actually be judged by a team of 11 actual Hot Wheels designers from Mattel. And they'd actually they'd actually sit down and take a look at whatever I showed them, whatever I uploaded to the competition, and and pick and pick who's the best was. And there there was a whole bunch of prizes to to go around. You had the first place, of course, with this really cool looking concept steampunk truck that Mattel's actually going to put in production, but you would get a prototype. And then for the runners up, I think there were 12 of us in total. So we're all in second place. All 12 of us are in second. Because um, I came second as well. Um, the runner up prize was a retro reissue of the original Sweet 16 Hot Wheels car. The 50th anniversary special reissue of a Hot Wheels custom original 16 Eldorado which is really cool. The 1967 Cadillac is just so cool, and it's really nice to get one of those. Just just for entering a competition, just for putting putting yourself out there. Now, you might think, James, why, why didn't we hear about this sooner? Well, it, it's been crazy, as I've said. It's been absolutely man manic. But there were posts on Facebook, so if you wanted to enter these competitions, and if you want to enter more in the future, just... just Keep an eye out. Don't just rely on like a YouTube channel to tell you what's happening. You have to you have to go out there. You have to be in the community. You have to talk to people and see what people are posting. There's so much that happens every day and every week that you need to you need to embrace that and jump into it. Or you know, just keep watching my videos. I mean, they're both great. 
But yes, so sadly I didn't win either competition, but I'm I'm happy that I came pretty high in both. I mean, the MakerShare one especially, you had people from all over the Hot Wheels fandom, you know, people who, who don't care for the Wasteland stuff, they would be entering in their custom cars which focus more on the on the realistic elements, on making them look like actual modded cars from real life, shrank down, you know, putting decals on there and little little fiddly bits. It's all about the little details. So so I was really, really pleased that I came as high as I did in that competition, let alone the Auto Kill five hundred where I took second place. But what else have I been up to? Well, we finally, we finally got around to sending the cars out for the thousand car giveaway. Um, I know it took far longer than it ever should. And this time around, what I'm actually going to do is have the cars wrapped up and ready to go. So the moment the competition is announced and the moment the, the names are picked out of a hat, I can just slap an address on there and send it out. This one took far too long. Life gets in the way as it always does. And I'm sorry, but I can at least tell you now, the people who have received the cars, we have everyone's favourite Magalan's Model Workshop. If you've not checked out his channel, it's worth going to have a look. He does some great tutorials on terrain building, as well as the, the lovely fiddly little bits for all your scale modelling needs. And the guys over at Rage Against the Dice, who are doing some great unboxing videos for modern tabletop games. You know, newest releases like Warhammer Conquest magazine, or tabletop games that are being released by Mantic or Cool Mini or not. So if you want to see some of the newer things that are coming out, it's absolutely worth going to check out their channel. And you might be wondering, James, if this competition was open to everyone, all of your subscribers, why did you just pick two fellow YouTubers? That seems a bit kind of against the point. It should be members of the community, not just content creators. Okay, hear me out, guys. First things first, of the thousand odd subscribers I have, there's about 400 of you who have your account set to hidden, so I don't know who you are, which is probably for the best, because I don't want everyone knowing who I am on the internet. As we go into our next sponsor, NordVP... No, no, no. Um, and secondly, not everyone has any form of communication connected with their YouTube account. So, not an email address, not a Facebook account, nothing. So I could pick a name out of the hat, and then it's just dead silence. What, what, what am I meant to do? So next time we'll be doing things more professionally. I'll have an actual separate website or program or something to pick a name out of the hat and you'll have to like enter your at least some form of contact detail like an email address even if it's just one that you make up for that competition that's fine I don't care just so long as it's a mean a way to actually communicate with you anyway enough about the thousand car giveaway more important news because time extended three is finally out yes the truckosaurus competition ended this is old news for a lot of you, I know, but bear with me, because Time Extended 3 is out, the rules for Truckosauruses are out, whole new rules for vehicles and weapons are out, and scenarios, and me and Render have done a video on this, it'll be coming to his channel soon, so go check that out, he's my main man when it comes to all things Gaslands special rules. Political side, so you could be like, yo, I'll flip your car back over, but you gotta go after this person with it. Oh, you know, it, or I'll flip it, this car back over, but you can't damage me with that car. So now I, you flip the car back <laughs> over, and there's another weapon going after your other enemies and not going after you. Well, this is the thing. If you use your motorhome to flip one of your opponent's cars, it's crew from your vehicle. Don't you get to control it? You know, if I, if I oh, take out my opponent's really? performance car, like... Isn't it now my performance car? Isn't that how that works? I don't you know. know I mean... This is even better. For, forget the political game. <laughs> I'm just going to outright jack your vehicle. I like that. What if you use the motorhome with a harpoon and a ram to just go around, drag cars to it, destroy them, and take them over? Oh, That's oh, great. It's, it's, like, it's like recycling. It's I love it. <laughs> And just some of the builds people have put in from the, this community, I think these are absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love a couple of these. One by Keith Matkey, 
with this almost friendly looking nose to his truckosaurus i i love that with the giant rocket pod with get wrecked on it i i think that's a great build i don't think that made it into time extended 3 which is such a shame because it's so creative but then I also love Michael Gears one with the multi-headed hydro-looking beast because I think he actually used some drag racer bodies on there as well to make those really long snouts for the build. I think that's fantastic. The creativity this community comes up with stuns me every day. I absolutely love and adore the work you guys do. So keep doing it. Keep making toy cars. Keep coming up with crazy ideas. And keep looking at the Time Extended series, because if Time Extended 3 coming out wasn't enough, there's now another competition, and it goes on until the end of January on December, uh, on February 1st, the results will come in, so have a look at the Gaslands Facebook page, have a look on the website, because what they want you to do for Time Extended 4 is a wasteland diorama. You've got to create a scene or a scenario that really represents the spirit of Gaslands, the spirit of the Wasteland and car combat. And there's so many different ways you could go with this. I mean, we've already started to see entries coming in of cars crashed into each other or crashing into snowmen because it is winter. I love the idea of making some sort of Gaslands throne or like winner's podium. I think that would be really cool, but not like necessarily for the driver, but for the car to actually be lifted up and put on this on this podium, this throne. So there's so much to look at there that's possible with that competition. So if you can, if you've got the time this January, because December's almost over, enter that, enter that competition. And last but not least, I've been work. I've been working. I work in a food warehouse, so things have been absolutely insane with the build-up to Christmas, and it's probably going to get even more insane now that we're entering 2019. But I've also been working on a commission that's been coming along really well. It's had it's had its fair share of hiccups, but the guy I've been working with, he's been really patient, which is really good. He's got a fine eye for detail with what he wants and what he wants to see come out of this. So I've had to divide up time between work, family, commission, competitions, my other hobbies and interests, because I, I do other things like play games and Magic the Gathering. I don't put any of that on YouTube because I know you guys are here for the toy cars and that's great. But it's that, it's like spinning plates. It's all the, the act of spinning plates. So, so that's what I've been getting up to, you know, being pulled here, there, and everywhere. So what are we going to talk about today? Because, I mean, this has gone on for a video by itself, but now this is going to be an extra specially long one, because I know you guys like that. So today I want to talk about where, especially today, because we're going into the new year, and we've just been hit by Christmas, the, the financial black hole that is Christmas. I know on everyone's minds is going to be where can I get cars for cheap? So you all know my love of charity shops and the best thing about charity shops are the ones where you find blind bags of cars. Now you'll typically find these big baskets of toy cars typically for quite a low price. I mean, there's actually a Robot Wars vehicle in there as well. And you might find some loose cars like this little uh, beach buggy here. But the best part for me is when you find those big mixed bags of of cars. And if you think about how much you might spend at Poundland or a dollar store just to get one, the fact that you can get multiples. And in most charity shops, you can open the bag there and pick out the ones you want and just donate the ones that you can't use or you don't like the look of. You can just donate them back and they, you know, they're happy with that. But I love it. I love the value for money. But more often than not, with this time of year, you tend to find shops will bring more toys from out back into the shop floor. Especially things like this this wonderful pink bone shaker here. I never even knew they did it in bright candy pink, so I think that's great. Um, but you do, you find all sorts of, of strange toys. And I think one of the keys when looking at the different toys that you can find in charity shops is to not just think of them as oh I'll turn this into a vehicle to, to use in a game but also can I use it as something as a piece of terrain or as an objective or 
just to remove a piece of it, like this pretty cool digger arm attachment here on this on this cat truck. So I think a big part of when you go out and you look to try and fight in cheap bargains, don't just think, oh, I can only, you know, look at cars to use, you know, for part of my team. Think about what can I use to build gates or what can I use to build features that will do something in the game. I mean, I love the idea of this great big green, it, it's, it's a ridiculous toy. I mean, this is probably some Bob the Builder thing here, but I love the idea that this could be something in the game that like could attack players. So here's just a clip from when me and Lee went uh, to a charity shop. So this was with um, Bleeped Up Productions. And again, you see the baskets of cars that are around. And, you know, you can you could spend like some time in a charity shop and just have a dig through. And you will find really neat, cool old cars because people donate all sorts of stuff. But in my mind, it's always worth leaving some behind. You know, you do, as mad as it is to say, you don't want all the cars in the world. You might think you do, but you don't. So just changing over to Poundland for a minute, they tend to have lots of Hot Wheels and Matchbox, but some of the older stuff. But when they do get newer things, like movie tie-ins, they tend to be pretty just bizarre builds, I find. Like, here's something from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I haven't seen it. Um, but, you know, the character cars, they can range from it's just like a decal stuck on a normal car, so it's a bit a bit weak. I, I don't really like it that much. But then you get some others, like these Star Wars cars, and they're actually designed and themed to look like vehicles from the Star Wars films, which I really like. And if it's going to be like a centerpiece car for your for your gang, why not? Why not? You know, spend a pound or a dollar and have that really cool, really detailed body. But this is the downside of going to somewhere like a charity shop or Poundland. What they have is just random. There's no, <laughs> there's no controlling what you're going to see. So I tend to go to these places more often than I do uh, Asda, Walmart, or your bigger big box stores. I mean, take this for example. So when Loot Crate was at the height of its power, they were doing all sorts of crazy things to put in their movie boxes. And here's the car Eleanor for, from Gone in 60 Seconds. It's a beautifully detailed little car, but then you look at the shelf and there's like 20 of these things all going for a pound. And you know that this is stock that they've had to liquidate after so long. And it's a shame because you think... So once upon a time, that would have been really expensive as part of a loot crate. But now, it, well, now it's just for anyone. No, it's just there for the taking. So here we are in Home Bargains. And if you need a Truckosaurus to just drop down on the table, yes, Dino Trucks do have a toy range at pretty affordable prices. And because these are big, heavy toys for children, they've got lots of play features. They've got lots of detail. And to be honest, for the money, they're really good. I mean, they're not for everyone. Some of the designs are pretty, you know, out there. They might You might think they're a bit kiddish, or you might not quite like the aspects of one or two areas. But if you're just thinking about taking them apart for bits, I mean, you can't really go wrong. And this is the nice thing about just going out and looking at what's out there rather than, right, I've got a budget and I've got to spend it and I've got money burning a hole in my pocket. Let's buy, 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 buy. It's like, no, just just go out there and let things inspire you rather than going, right, I've, you know, I've got to go out and buy a whole gang right now. I need to find the best. It's like, I don't, I don't go around like on eBay or Amazon desperately trying to spend money. I, I find things that are good value for money and maybe buy them. Like from this dino truck shelf, I picked up this white one because I quite liked that sort of almost chainsaw head thing it had going on there, as well as the fact that the detail on the tail had more of a rough and rugged, like, sheets of scrap metal riveted onto it. And just, I mean, look at this, this sort of brontosaurus thing. And, and of course, they all have play features like things that pop up or or go out like yeah it can it could start a lot of projects 
So here we are in my local Asda Walmart in the toy section. So this is pretty much where I go when I want to see what the latest releases are at the end of the day. This is the place where you have the newest stuff like so when Hot, Hot Wheels releases its 50th anniversary stuff this is where I would find it if I needed to have it. Likewise with the Jurassic World film being released this is where you get all the new cars from that. So just looking at the latest release of Jurassic World stuff, which I know is old news now, but, you know, it's been busy. Um, but you do get, you know, a nice variety of cars from, like, the Matchbox kits, especially. Um, some of the stuff in them, I think, is pretty much brand new, like these bulletproof ball things that were in the first Jurassic World film. They're they're pretty neat. Um you know, they could be turned into all sorts of things. Like if you crack one open, you could put a little guy in there and turn it into like a drone or some sort of corporate iPod that floats around the race recording it. And, and then that could be a target for the for the Wastelanders. And you, again, nice little details like the little claw on the uh, submersible ball thing. And of course, you've got some of the stranger kits as well, like these toys where you've got the the big model dinosaur as well as the vehicle that's there to catch and transport it which is really cool so again it's it's something new and it's something that could be changed and modified i mean i love this giant like gripping dinosaur catcher on the front of this it it almost looks like a hummer an ingen hummer from the film with all the extra armor around the the vehicle and of course, something that me and Fowrender talked about in our second time extended video, a helicopter with a giant claw on it to fly around and catch, in this case, dinosaurs. But you can clearly see that's designed to fly around and pick up cars. Like, that's, it's just, it's just asking to be done. Let alone this wonderful little, it's almost like a little portable gate. Like you just slap that down in front of another car or a biker or something and that's it. They're trapped and they just can't get out. So lots of, lots of new things coming out which, which look you know, really interesting. But then you get like the second wave release of stuff and this gets me when companies do it. So you've got here the original from a few months back, completely clean and new. And then the second Jurassic World film rolls around and it's like, hmm, how can we repackage and resell this product? Well, let's do a battle damage edition. And it's the same car for a higher price. They'd, like Even the art on the box is the same with like some Photoshop differences and a new logo. But the car just has a decal on it, like just an extra layer of dirt and grime. And that's it. And it's like... That's not really worth the increased price. Again, here's one of those wonderful little bulletproof ball things. Okay, great little toy. What's the difference? Oh, it's got a muddy decal on it and a cracked glass looking decal. Okay, is it worth that extra couple of dollars or extra couple of pounds? I, I don't think so. But then this is how you get into the murky world of of these things not selling and then they go to discount stores and then eventually Poundland where all toys go to die. I I don't know, it's it's hard to say. Like I like new things, but then when you do start to notice things just being rehashed, it's like oh like I love this this APC armored truck look looking thing. You know, I think there's so much potential with this guy. You know, there's there's room in the back to have little people. I think there's room for a little gunner as well to come out the top. It's it's fantastic. It's just waiting to be turned into a, a real heavily armored wasteland vehicle, like a zombie survivor's wasteland vehicle. But hey, it's not all gloom and doom. I've always maintained that one of the best brands out there is Tonka, even on my Wolverine war rig build on the front cover of Time Extended One. I use Tonka monster truck wheels because Tonka, big toys for big boys. There's something about having a different brand into the foray, having another choice rather than just Hot Wheels or Matchbox, especially when it's not something you necessarily expect. Like Tonka's always quite big, so for them to do like micro machine scale with these Tonka tinies, I think that's great. And then you look at the potential, like, okay, so I've got my 
I've got my Hot Wheels car here or my Matchbox car. It's driving around. It needs a little remote control bomb to jump out the back. I need something that looks like a little RC car. Well, there you go. Micro machines, guys. I've been saying this since Time Extended 2 came out. Just micro machines every, everything. But if you can't find micro machines, go for something else. And Tonka do these lovely little random loot box, collect them all style little kits. So, you know, you get a little terrain looking thing out of it, like a teeny tiny little garage or storage crate. And then inside that is a random little teeny tiny car that will be turned into a little RC bomb for, for a Gaslands race. So that'll be a video coming out in the not too distant future. And then, of course, Hot Wheels 50th anniversary. Now, these have been cropping all up all over the place, from Home Bargains to, to Asda, Walmart, you name it. So I think the the glow of the 50th anniversary is, is wearing off just a little bit. At the time, I, I swore these were going to sw sell out, so I bought one immediately for full retail, like a silly sod. Um, of course, I bought the Bone Shaker, because it, it calls to me. But I love, I love the fact that they took, you know, some of the most popular fan favorite cars and did them in this fantastic black and gold color scheme. And I was worried at the time. I was like, oh, am I going to get one? Am I going to get a bone shaker? Yeah, there he is. So I was very pleased with that. So these are something I've seen many times now and I needed to know once and for all what the deal was. So these Super Zings, rivals of Kaboom, are some kind of little squishy collectible toy for kids, it goes without saying, but they're brightly coloured, they're bizarre, they're just absolutely crazy. And I needed to know on the inside what these things were like. You know, what's the scale? What's the... Uh, how usable are these? So naturally, I picked one up to bring back and open up. And as you can see, this is old footage because the lighting's all over the place. But there he is. There's a little paintbrush guy in his box having a great time. And there's eight supercars to collect, which is basically amounts to four designs, but in two colours for each design. I also picked up one of these little packets with drivers in because I didn't know if the thing came with a little guy to put in there or not. So... You know, let's let's f open this and find out. <laughs> this is this goes back to my undying hatred of mystery blind bag products because I think you need to know what you're putting your hands on at the end of the day. Hot Wheels and and Matchbox, you guys have got it right. You see it, you know what it is, you buy it. Whereas with this stuff. I don't know how big it is. I don't know if I can even use this for my gas land. So, oh boy, that's big. <laughs> yep, that's that's not Hot Wheels scale. That's not Hot Wheels scale at all. Um, I like I like the details. You know, I, I've been saying that all this video. I like the wheel designs. I like the big sort of front shield on the front and the flame pipes coming out the sides. But the rocket's pretty cool. But that giant open space in the middle, what are you meant to put there? This is um, not uh, not the best, I think, for the money. It's not it's not ideal for Gaslands or other car combat games. I mean, look how wide that is compared to a normal car. It's just just bizarre. It would have to be like a van or something. It would have to be an enormous sort of vehicle type to really to really fit in the game but but like I said there are bits on it that I do like like the the hubcaps on the wheels so let's just get this little guy out it's some sort of hammer or what what is this guy he's squishy he's like a rubbery plastic and he's a he's just a little silver hammer so there you have it. That, that's my incredibly rubbish guide as to where to buy cars during this time of year. Basically sums up as charity shops or Poundland to find those pretty decent deals um, in this post post Christmas season. Well, all I can say is I hope you guys have a, a pretty good 2019. Um, I've got 
a special video coming out at some point in January to sort of celebrate having an entire year, because we're almost there, 20th of January, that'll be one year of making these terrible videos, and and having nearly 2,000 of you guys subscribe to my channel, it's... I mean, like, like I've said before, I expected, like, maybe 100 people, you know, I didn't think people would actually enjoy this stuff, so um, I'll keep making them for fun, I'll keep putting out this content because I enjoy it, and you, you guys enjoy it too, so so who knows, we'll see what 2019 holds, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching, have a Merry Christmas, well, Christmas has already happened now, but have a Happy New Year, and I'll see you all next year. Thank you for watching Wasteland, and goodbye.